you don't have to have a huge lifted vehicle to go do all these trails and go explore and enjoy the beautiful country that we live in you just gotta have the the desire to go out there and check it out that's that's really the number one takeaway from anything that i've said today <laughs> jordan van kelster um, currently i'm 27 years old uh, i went to college in the upper peninsula michigan uh, where i got a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and i wanted to move out west so i applied to a bunch of different jobs um, out in the different states out west and um, I, I accepted a job offer here in utah and i i couldn't be happier the the place out here is just absolutely amazing the landscape the opportunities that i have the adventures it's just an unreal experience here um i started off with uh my jeep grand cherokee when i first moved out here and that lasted about a day um i i finished unpacking my my apartment and put all my uh furniture and whatnot in there uh, my buddies that came down to help me move in i took them up on the mountains behind my house and my Jeep overheated and blew up basically. So, um, my, I, I thought it was just a, you know, radiator leak, you know, we were having some issues or overheated and I'd be able to fix that and replace it. But no, I blew, I blew the motor in my Jeep. Um, after about a, a month of riding my motorcycle around and transporting me back and forth to work, I ended up finding a, a forerunner. Uh, that I was able to to buy from a dealership up north in Salt Lake area and brought that home and I've had it to this day and I couldn't be happier. I currently have like 83 or 84,000 miles on it in just over three years. So I've, I've put it through her paces. Um, started off completely stock, had it completely stock for eight months, six, eight months. And after a bunch of the adventures that I've been on throughout the years, upgrades just have come left and right and it's been more versatile for the applications that i that i have uh, for the adventures that i want to do so um it's a basically a dream purchase for me and i've been able to use it for three years now and i've done some crazy things i've been to some crazy places and uh tyler and i are going to get into that here in a little bit so i'm very excited yeah, I, I bought my F-150 when I was working at Ford and it was brand new, like straight off the lot. And I, I feel like I put like, I don't know, it was like 60,000 miles on it in the first two years because we were driving everywhere and beating the crap out of that thing. I know within the first month of owning that thing, I was driving it through the UP to the tip of the, the Keweenaw and trees were rubbing on it. And all my buddies were just like, oh my God, the brand new truck, this thing is getting scratched. And I'm sitting there cringing, white knuckling on the, the steering wheel, <laughs> just thinking it's meant to be abused. It's it's a tool. It's meant to be beat up. Like, yep. just drive it, just drive it, just drive it. And yeah, I've had so much fun with that. So I'm, I'm excited to dive into, you know, the vehicle abuse uh, with my truck versus your forerunner because that's going to be a fun time. Um, I, I actually have to agree with you on that. Uh, I've, I've done some gnarly stuff uh, over the years where I've gotten quite a few scratches in the vehicle, especially just this last year where we went to Oregon for, for 10 days and got some scratches in the vehicle that really pains me to look at now. But like you said, it is a tool. It is, it is doing the job that I bought it for. Started off, you know, brand new 2021 vehicle. Zero, I got 126 miles on it from when it was delivered. And uh, she's, she's been put through her paces. So. I love that. I, I hate when people buy these trucks with this intent to use it as a tool and they just baby it. They won't haul anything in it. It just drives me wild. <laughs> it's uh, a pavement princess, a show truck. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, it's all the people down south that buy trucks just to drive around the city. And uh, yeah. So, so if we take a step back, back I mean, how did you grow up? Like, what led into you know, wanting to actually move out to Utah because because it sounds like you graduated college and you knew you wanted to be out west. But what was it about college or your upbringing that made you want to end up in Utah? Um, I I think more of it was the side of skiing than off roading, to be honest, or snowboarding. Um, so the Upper Peninsula they have uh, Mount Bohemia, which is a great place for um, skiing and snowboarding. Amazing snow up there from the lake effect. So I, when I moved out or was looking for places to move, I wanted to find places that had um, 
ski resorts that were, you know, really cool, great snow, stuff like that. But I also did a lot of hiking. I've done so much hiking since I was even a kid. Um, I did Isle Royale, Pictured Rocks, backpacking trips, stuff like that. Um, so I also wanted to find a place that had really cool hiking. Um, the off-roading side of things wasn't really in my huge wheelhouse uh, until I moved out to Utah. I've done, you know, I, I did a bunch of off-roading, but not as much in college and when I was younger until I moved out to Utah. Um, <laughs> I, so in the fraternity at uh, Sigma Tau Gamma, we, when I first joined it in 2015, I think it was the spring of 2016, uh, we had a bunch of brothers that, you know, were very outdoorsy people, um, all loved off-roading and, and taking our vehicles and pushing through some stuff. So we had like 30, 35 people crammed into six vehicles. We had uh, a Ford Ranger that was a little bit lifted and, and uh, built out with a winch, uh, probably the most capable vehicle out of our fleet that day. We had a Chevy Silverado that was lifted with some bigger tires, uh, completely stock uh, Suburban or yeah, Suburban um, that should not have been out there for what we were doing. It was way too heavy and, and way too low to the ground for everything we were doing. Um, we had a Jeep, an older Jeep Grand Cherokee that was lifted with some bigger tires, uh, completely stock uh, Wrangler Rubicon um and then a uh, forerunner that was stock with just some you know better tires anyway so we started off with just a casual you know day of going on some dirt trails and muddy trails um started at like 1 p.m and then throughout the the day it just kept getting worse and worse but we ended up getting into snow and we had one vehicle the chevy silverado or i sorry before that we had the the suburban that got stuck off the trail on the side of the trail and completely framed out. We couldn't pull it through, couldn't winch it out. Um, you know, it, we just had to abandon it there and we didn't want to abandon it. Obviously that's a, that's someone's personal vehicle that we would have to come back and get in a week or two. Um, and then later on down the trail, we had the, the silver auto break through the ice on the trail and blocked the other four vehicles, three vehicles. Uh, and the Ranger was in the front of it. Um, so the, the ranger tried getting it out. We couldn't get it out, couldn't winch it out, couldn't pull it out, nothing. So we had 25 people that were walking through the, the forest at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. Um, the, the ranger, you know, it had to winch through a bunch of mud holes, snow holes, deep snow. We ended up doing a creek crossing that was like three, three, four feet tall that, um, water ended up coming into the, the truck, the cab of the truck. Um, just a, just an absolute, uh, mess, just, just a mess. It was, it was a long night. We didn't get home until like one or two in the morning the next day. Um, but that is by far my favorite memory of off-roading and, uh, it got me into it a little bit more as much as it sucked. It was a great time and it led me to more of the challenging things that I've done to this day. You know, you learn your lessons from that and you just go from there. So that, that helped me with a bunch of the, the snow wheeling and off-roading that I've done here in Utah. Um, and moved out here, did some, uh, did some more wheeling and just got into it. So I gotta, I gotta shed a little context on this story. I was not there, but I've heard it from many perspectives and I was in the same fraternity as, as Jordan is. Uh, there was a bunch of brothers from the fraternity okay this was at the end of spring so the snow was melting right yep we get a ton of snow up there all the snow's melting they say oh it's a beautiful day out there's still snow in the woods but let's go off-roading we're itching to go off-roading and what we did is we always had a senior barrel and all the graduating brothers would come together and buy a bunch of kegs at for the house invite all their friends over so that they can come and drink and hang out with them and say goodbye and congratulations for for their time up at DAC and there's they wake up they go out early in the morning and they say let's go off-roading before our senior barrel it's gonna be great and with everything that jordan just explained these brothers were stuck in the woods missed their own senior barrel got back at like three or four in the morning as he said and 
everyone was gone. Like they missed their entire party. They bought these these kegs for this party, and they just get back. And I can imagine they just sat down on the couch and was like, "I would love to have one of the beers from my barrel that I missed," and like just you know pour a beer, drink that, go right to bed because they're so whooped and exhausted from this adventure they survived. Every time I hear the story, it's the funniest thing in the world for me. And uh, yeah, you you got like a like you said a type two fun taste of the worst, the best worst thing that could happen in off roading. You get stranded, but you made it out. No one got hurt. You got all the vehicles out several weeks later. Yeah, um, that's, and I was that's uh, uh, I was in that that suburban that got stuck on the side, and we we went into this venture. It was. 50 60 degrees outside it was a beautiful day like you said a beautiful day in the afternoon i was in tank top and in, in, in a tank top and shorts <laughs> athletic shorts and so you know we had to walk out of there at 10 11 12 o'clock at night until or, well I, it ended up being later than that even but you know it got down to 30 40 degrees we were freezing every there were so many people that were just cold and we we're just huddled together we we're trying to survive it was like so it was, anyway, that, that's that's a little bit more information that we need to get into right now. But it was it was an adventure for sure. Oh my god, that's so good. Uh, and, and was it was it your time of a tactic that solidified you wanting to move out to Utah? You wanted to hike, you wanted to do the snow, and you got that taste of off roading. Absolutely, absolutely. Every almost everything I did up at Tech, the outdoorsy things uh led me to choose utah because i've i've never been to utah but i read so much and i've seen videos of um everything that people have done out there between the national parks that are here the um the ski resorts that are here and then some some of the off-roading that i've seen like in moab you got your famous off-road trails um i didn't expect to ever be able to do them someday but we'll we'll get into that in a little bit but um yeah, it, it definitely solidified my choices. Like this state has everything that I want and more, and it's super appealing for me. And it still is to this day. I've been out here for just over three years now, and I I don't look back on it at all. It's just amazing. That's awesome. I've never been to Utah, but everything I see from from your adventures and and the people I've talked to, they've spoke so highly of Utah. And you hear everyone that travel for snowboarding and snow sports in utah it's either colorado or utah and it's just the place i need to get out to i, I know that it's amazing with everything that i've seen and yeah I, I get it i get it and i've never been there um yeah so you you get out there your jeep broke you buy this forerunner and you have this kind of inkling this taste of off-roading you buy this forerunner so you can use it out there um what are the first few things you've done out there and what did you learn as you started to take this stock forerunner out in the treacherous Utah? Uh, so <laughs> I think it was actually the, literally the first weekend after I bought my vehicle, I kind of wanted to test its capabilities and see what I could put it through. Um, so the same, the same trail that I took my Jeep on where it died on me, I took my forerunner there, but I did it in a reverse way. Um, the, my jeep couldn't make it up the up the certain rock paths that i had to go over and when i came down that area my my forerunner had absolutely zero issues and i was like completely stock no lift it had the stupid little side steps on it and uh highway tires with minimal traction and i was looking at it, I was like this is just incredible this this stock vehicle is more capable than than my jeep i mean my jeep was completely stock too uh, but still, it's like, it's just crazy the difference in two different vehicles. And it it's like, holy crap, I'm, I'm able to do so many more things um, with this vehicle than I even imagined. So that first weekend, I took it out and uh, I, I went up on some mountains nearby my house, uh, tested out some different trails, kind of saw what it was able to do, um, tested out the four low, <laughs> made sure that worked because that's kind of important. Um, and the next weekend i went i don't remember exactly where i went it was somewhere south of me closer to southern utah and i ended up going up this mountain and checking things out came down by a, a dry lake bed or it was a it's a lake but it's kind of dried up a little bit so the edges of it are the clay and and the rough material that's down there 
and I made the mistake of driving on this lake bed and I didn't really know the difference between Utah clay and Midwest mud at the time. So I kind of was just going into it blind, but I turned around on this lake bed and then I stopped because I wanted to walk towards the lake and check it out and, you know, see if the water was, you know, cold or, you know, if it was clear, or dirty, whatever the case was. And as soon as I stopped, I felt my vehicle sink just a little bit. And I was like, oh crap. And I was in two wheel drive at first. I was like, this is not good. So I put in four wheel drive right away and I tried moving with my stock tires and everything. Couldn't even go. I couldn't rock it back and forth. I couldn't uh, power through it. I couldn't do anything. And I, ju I just was stuck. <laughs> it was like, I didn't realize how bad this clay was. Clay, the, the Utah clay, if it's wet, it, it gets on your tires and it cakes on there to the point where it literally rounds out your tire and it makes it so smooth that you cannot gain any traction whatsoever. Unless you have like a really hardcore mud tire or something like that, it just cakes on there. Um, anyway, I, I got I, like two or three minutes after I got stuck, a random vehicle drove by and they had some people, they were able to help push me out. So it wasn't that big of a deal, but it was, it was definitely an eye-opening thing for me. It's like, all right, don't go into clay until I get better tires. I need some better tires in order to go through some of this because it is just, it is nasty, it's muddy, it's it's sticky, it's just horrible. Um, that was, is that, that was one of the, the, is that kind of the train of everything out in Utah? Is it either like rock or clay? Pretty much, yeah. There's There's not really much of like direct mud unless you're higher up in the mountains where the, um, where you're on the mountainside basically the lower elevations in the desert and everything is typically a little bit more you know like clay or or either the soft sand or something like that but yeah i've never wild I, I have an f-150 and i've beaten the crap out of that we we took it to we took it to the sand dunes with my kids and that was that was epic i've lived in michigan my whole life i've never been in the sand dunes if you you know if you're not from michigan or the midwest look up just michigan sand dunes it's it's crazy uh is that the I silver lake crazy. sand dunes yep there's the there's sleeping bear sand dunes which is a national park i believe and then just south of that is the silver lake sand dunes and we went there it was awesome it was so cool i was very afraid of breaking my truck but i am also <laughs> i'm also always trying to put that truck into new situations you know i knew if i got stuck i knew if i broke I'd be near my campground. I could get towed out, towed out by the many people there. I have insurance on it, and uh, you know I can make it work. But we went there, and this thing, this thing did fantastic. I got, I got beached one time, and <laughs> some guy came and towed me out. But other than that, it did great. Put it four low, just ripped it up all the hills. Did great. But that was like that was a learning experience. I've never done mud or uh, clay like you're saying so i don't know how to drive in there um yeah. is there any like tips and tricks you have for riding the clay or like other things that you did out there uh the clay over the years that i've learned um it's it's kind of difficult to explain you you want to keep your speed but you also want to go slow enough to have control but if you're on the clay and you try to turn sharp your wheels are just going to or your car is just going to keep going straight um, the thing that I've learned over, over the, the past couple of years is you got to go into your turns a little bit more cautiously. You got to plan ahead for it. Um, and you gotta, if you slam on the brakes, you're just going to slide. You're not going to stop. You got to be very cautious with, uh, with each move that you're doing as you're driving around on the clay. Um, my buddy and I just literally, uh, two weeks ago, he was up on the mountain, he was hunting. And he got a flat tire, so I had to go up and help him. But we were coming down the mountain, and it was all just um, it was all just clay and wet because it just rained a little bit. And I ended up sliding off the road just to, just slightly um, because the clay was so slick and caked up on my tires that I couldn't I couldn't do anything about it. Um, but I would I would highly recommend that you go slow at first to understand the the capabilities of your vehicle and how it performs in the in the excuse me in the clay um bef before you just drive and haul ass through it um 
it's definitely a learning process and I've learned by my mistakes. So hopefully you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made <laughs> to learn, but, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely just be cautious, go a little bit slower, you know, plan ahead for your, your turns and hope for the best. I <laughs> hope you don't have a cliff right <laughs> nearby. Cause that if there was, there was one time I was going around a corner and it sloped downhill with the clay on it that if i would have slid off i would have been rolling down a long cliff sorry mom but it was dangerous <laughs> yeah but af after that um after pretty much after that adventure and some other miscellaneous adventures that i had um i realized the more i wanted to do with my vehicle um i wanted to take it on harder trails i wanted to have more off-road capability um, I wanted to be able to do stuff that had a little bit more of a technical uh, aspect to it. So I started uh, building out my vehicle just a little bit further. Um, started out with some rock sliders as protection for the side so I didn't damage up my um, rocker panels, basically. Um, eventually, a couple months later, I got my lift on where I put bigger tires. So I started, I put like 33s on, which aren't huge you know they're still kind of small but they're big enough for the forerunner to give me a little bit more ground clearance and they have way better traction than those stock tires did um and i've had no is literally zero issues with my lift and tires that i put on and it's just been incredible the the trails that i've been able to take it to the places that i've been, been able to go that are off the beaten path uh just incredible i know the I think I mentioned this on the last episode that we did, but we went and did a month long trip out West from Michigan out to California and back. And one of the best things that we did was we went and camped on uh, BLM land at the Grand Canyon. It was just, you know, untouched, you know, state property. You had to have an off-road vehicle to be able to get there because these, these ruts, these like grooves in this, this two track were just immense. But we got out there and literally camping on the rim of the Grand Canyon. It was it was unreal. It was one of the coolest places we ever ever camped. Um, I don't know where I was going with this. Uh, did did you find that once you upgraded, once you did the lift and got the new tires, that you could approach more or less anything in Utah? Pretty much. Um, there the the only technical trails and stuff that i can't quite approach is more so along the lines of like hardcore off-roading um you know like some of the harder trails in moab that require um massive tires lockers stuff like that but for for me with what i do uh with all the hiking camping adventuring that i do the vehicle that i have is built almost to perfection like the bigger tires and everything it, it takes me to trails to get better access to areas that um, less people are like I'm a social person, but when I go out into the wilderness, I don't want to be around people. I want to stay away from people. I want to be in the solitude because that is, that's my time to get away, um, be away from people, like be alone with my thoughts, uh, enjoy a fire, enjoy a glass of whiskey, enjoy, you know, quality time with my dog, stuff like that. And having a vehicle that's slightly more capable than the rest has been a huge benefit for me because I can, I can go to these places and not have to worry about it. Um, I have, uh, I'm just watching the video that's in your, in your background right now. I have uh, my, my drawers that are built up in my uh, forerunner. I built, I built some custom drawers with sliders in it so I can put my camping gear or uh, my recovery gear my cook gear and some other miscellaneous stuff. And, it, and it's like a perfect sleeping platform for me. Um, and that's been a huge benefit because I don't have to worry about having to carry huge containers of food and gear with me. I can just throw it right in those drawers and then sleep on the platform and I'm good to go. Um, but yeah, it, it takes me to these areas where minimal people are and it's just so peaceful. And that's that's one thing that I really vibe with is I have a stock F-150. I've done absolutely nothing to that thing. And you had this stock forerunner that you started with. And you've done some upgrades to it, but it was because you learned what your limitations were. I have this thing. I've beaten the piss out of it. I've done sand dunes. I've done off-roading. I've 
done two track caning. I've, I've, you know, camped out of the Grand Canyon, as I mentioned. Um, I two tracked up to like the rim of Zion. Um, this thing has not let me down in any way. I've been so happy with it. And just like every single sport, a lot of the things we talk about on this channel is type two fun is a, a sliding scale. Like you don't have to have the perfect gear to get involved in some of the yep. stuff you could, you can take whatever you have. It could be a minivan down some flat two track and you can get out in the middle of nowhere and kind of explore these areas, do some, some camping and see if it's something you even enjoy before you worry about upgrading your next vehicle to a forerunner F-150, you know, Jeep, whatever you want. And, uh, you know, same thing with, with everything, right? You don't need much to, you, you need a basic bike to try bike backing. You need some basic tennis shoes to try, you know, try running. And that, I, that's just something I just, I grasp on to so hard. Everyone gets so into their gear and gear is fun. Upgrades are fun, but they should not limit or they should not prevent you from starting something. So I, I just think it's so cool that you kind of found the limit, did these little upgrades. You're still not the biggest vehicle out there and you are doing so much out in beautiful Utah, which I've never even been to. And I know the off-roading is out there. Everyone's heard of Moab. Yeah. Everyone knows that's yep. a wicked off-roading place. Yep. So I, Tyler, I, I can't agree more. Honestly, that is, that is one of my biggest things is like, you do not have to have a, uh, you don't even need to have a lifted vehicle. Like you said, you can take a, a stock truck, some, some even SUVs um, I've seen on the trails that go not, not as deep into the trail as I go, but I see them in a few different areas that I've gone. A lot of them you can access by simple fire roads or gravel roads, but um, you don't need a hardcore vehicle to take you to the majority of the places that you want to go to get away from people, to see beautiful sites, to, explore more of god's beautiful country that he's created here it's just there's there's so much that you can see just with a, a regular old vehicle granted you can't take like a, a toyota camry or a chevy malibu or something down a lot of these trails but um uh, something with a little bit more ground clearance will get you there but in order to enjoy the trails a little bit more or the the lifestyle a little bit more there's the little bit of upgrades that I wanted to do it for, for me, I, I do a lot of the, you know, uh, back country roads where it's a little bit rougher. So the, the main, one of the main reasons I even upgraded my suspension was to get upgraded suspension for ride quality. Like, yeah, it gave me, um, a couple inches of lift for bigger tires, but it's more so the fact that it makes the ride smoother. It's more comfortable. I don't have to stress about, you know, hitting a, a, a huge wash hard and, and blowing out my factory suspension. But um, having the little bit of upgrade for ride quality makes a huge difference as well. Yeah, so I love that. I love that you kind of align with that. Can you can you maybe tell us about some of the places or some of the things you've done with your stock or upgraded vehicle? I know Utah is kind of a there's a lot there and you've yeah. been to a lot of places. So I'd love to hear about some of your favorites and, um, you know, maybe some of the things you've put your vehicle through to stress test it. The, the biggest, the biggest thing I've done, the, by far the best trail that I've done with my forerunner is Hell's Revenge in Moab. Hell's Revenge is like the iconic trail and the iconic place for off-roading in Utah. Um, if you're, if you're any sort of off-roader, there's like a 90% chance that you've heard of this trail because it is super iconic. Uh, I had a couple of my buddies ask me if I wanted to go join them on this trail and go do Hell's Revenge. It's like, I don't know if I'm capable of doing that right now. Like, all I have is 33s and, you know, some protection. So I was like, I'll protect the undercarriage and I have a little bit of lift on me, but I don't have like steel bumpers. I don't have anything else. So like, oh, you're fine. It's no big deal. Um, anyway, so I was super nervous going into it. And I have a video of it on my channel if you want to check that out. But the Hell's Revenge Trail, the the approach to it is literally like a, I don't even know how to do it right now, but it's like a super narrow approach with drop-offs on both sides. Um, it's like just wider than, you know, a regular or a full-size truck. So maybe 12 to 14 feet 
No, it's probably 12 feet wide is as far as it goes. And then it's just drop offs on both sides. So like, that's the, it's like the gatekeeper to see if you really want to go on this trail. <laughs> if you're kind of a, a, a newbie on this I was like, Oh man, this is, this is crazy. Um, and we kept going down the trail farther. Uh, and there was a, a rock uh, or approach that had to go like up a rock ramp. Um, and the two Jeeps that I was with, both of them were on, one of them was on 37s, one of them was on 35. So both of them are more capable than my vehicle, but they crawled up at pretty much no problem and they have lockers. So it's super simple for them. Um, and I went, I had to go off to the side of this trail and try and get a better angle. But I went into this knowing that there's potential for me to damage my vehicle a little bit. So I was like, all right, something could happen. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but there's very, very good possibility that something could happen. So basically the first main obstacle of the trail, we're going up this ramp and my back right tire drops off the rock in a bad spot and I damage my my rear bumper. It's just kind of pushed in on the corner. No big deal. Whatever. It's it's you know, it's a scar, but it's there. It's worth the adventure. And then we anyway, we keep going down the trail. There's a couple more harder obstacles and a couple more things. I was starting to get a little bit more comfortable in the vehicle because I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. My vehicle's capable. This is awesome. And we got to like the final obstacle that we were doing. And uh, it was a flat area, but it had pot. It was, it was a sloped area, um, mostly flat surface on the approach, but then it had like potholes on each side that you had to try and maneuver around and then flex through them and stuff like that. Um, and then at the very top, there was a big ramp that you had to go up that if you don't position your vehicle correctly, you can either tip over to the left, or if you go too far left, you will drop off on the right side and then you'll smash in your either bumper or your, the side of your vehicle or something. So I was a little nervous going up that. And then I watched the two Jeeps go, I was like, okay, it doesn't look too bad. And I had zero issues going up there until the very top ramp where I was slightly off camber and messed up and I had to get winched out of that just a little bit. So I had stability, but after that whole trail, I was like, Holy crap. It's so eye opening. It was like, my vehicle is, is super capable. There's so many things I can do. I was like the nerves, the nerves that I had, like my hands were shaking, my feet were shaking. I was like, Holy <laughs> crap. But it was unreal. It was such a cool experience like that. I didn't, I didn't build my vehicle to do hard trails like that but knowing that it can is like super cool. It's just, it's like, all right, this is, this is worth everything that I've done so far has been worth it. That it's is so nice having the most iconic thing I've done. I think. That's cool. I, I think I've seen the video of you climbing that. I don't even know that, that channel right to the top. Yeah. And it, it looks so much different from the outside. I know when you're in the vehicle, you can't really see what's going on. You're definitely taking guidance from all the experienced people ahead of you. And it, it's wild how much those experienced people can guide you and get you up those like sketchy things. If you just listen to where to turn and where to drive. Um, yeah, I can't sure. say I've done anything. I can't say I've done anything that intense, but we went to Big Bend in Texas. And if you have, if you're ever looking for like a national park to go to, I would highly recommend that one. That's probably my top three national parks in the world. Okay. And uh, oh my god, we had just the truck, and there was the the F one fifty has this gauge where it shows your your like your tilt or your yeah. the angle your you're at tilt. And I feel like I remember seeing sixteen percent, and I felt like you know Chelsea was about to just fall over on top of me. <laughs> um, 16 doesn't sound like a lot, but it felt like we were freaking on top of each other. You're just, um, like you're, you're like pushing off with one hand on the door panel, trying to hold on and sit still and <laughs> hope you don't yeah. tip over. Yeah. And we had a, we had a basket cage in our tailgate. We didn't have any like camp or anything. We had this basket cage. And the only issue we had is we kept bottoming out that basket cage because we'd come like in this dip and dip out and we just scrape the bottom of that thing. But we did great. I mean, we camped in some ridiculously rustic spots and half of that park is just awesome because, because they like, like the park has these four by four accessible camping spots. You have to have a four by four vehicle to get to these, you know, good luck, you know, congrats on booking it. 
Um, yeah, and it's it's just nuts. Like going off of the you know try things, just having somebody to hold your hand and you know have the extra tools to get you out if you're stuck. That's that's so good. Um, one thing yeah. I wanted to ask is, go ahead. No, you go. You're good. I was gonna say one thing. One thing I was gonna ask is, so I'm I'm used to kind of I'm I'm used to some areas of off road where you know yeah find, finding off road trails is kind of hard. I mean, you either have like the dedicated off road or you have the dedicated snowmobile trails, but normally you're just kind of exploring public land that is known for off-roading i know in michigan i know in the midwest i know in like a lot of the world you're just looking at blm land and you're just following the maps on on these apps or these websites to find these trails you know how how are you finding these spots or, or what is like the landscape of utah is utah mostly public private i really don't know i've never been there yeah that's that's actually the the biggest thing for me about utah is um coming from the midwest is most of the, those the land that you can go to is uh private land or it's designated off-road trails or something like that but in utah it's it's a uh, blm uh, bureau of land management trails or or it's just like forest service roads or or public roads like that and there's so many dispersed camping areas but it's it's amazing the places that you can go just by driving down a random road like behind my house uh not my house but like near the mountains by my house there's a bunch of different trails and i spent a day last winter in the snow i spent a day just driving around random trails i didn't i didn't have a set plan i didn't know where i was going i didn't know what it would what i would get into but uh, a lot of the trails are here you just you can just take them for miles and miles and miles uh, and and they'll take you to a bunch of different random areas and some of them even connect um all the way through the state like we've talked about in our in that previous podcast um but i also use an app called uh, gaia gps it's uh, g-a-i-a and i've had that pretty much since right when i moved out here and i use that for all my off-road uh trails that i find i use it for all my hiking i have pins in it for um uh canyoneering slot canyons you know stuff like that and it's helped me find some really cool trails because you can look at the the topography of a map and see like oh this this road drives right next to a cliff like you can see the topography of the cliff just dropping off there and it's super cool it's you're able to find trails like that and just and just go um it's a whole different experience having a specific app uh, to, to help navigate, but also the ability to just go on any random trail and go for miles and miles is unreal. Is that what you kind of use to find your secret spots? Cause I know that I, I know you have like Moab in Utah, which I think is just a very explored famous off-roading place, but yeah. I also assume there's a lot of places in Utah that are just held close to the heart where, you know, you don't really want to reveal them. They're a secret Correct. to you. They're a secret to the people. Though. They're a secret to the people that can find them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So is that app kind of your your treasure to find these secret places? Oh, absolutely. It's my go-to. There, I mean, the areas that I this this app shows me, like you can go on pretty much any app or or. Uh, um, Google online and you can find these places anyway, but using this app, I just zoom in on random places and be like, maybe there's something cool around here. Maybe I can go find an off-road trail or a, a cool, uh, waterfall or something like that. And I end up, and I end up finding stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been my go-to one. It's like, I, <laughs> I hate advertising some of the places that I go because mm -hmm. I don't want them to be po become popular because, um, it's nice to go to these places and be secluded away from everyone else. Um, but if I can find them on an app that I use, I guarantee other people can, but it's just the fact that I spend my time doing these off-road trails and doing these hiking trails that I am specifically looking for cool places like that. Yeah, I feel that I, I was learning a lot about BLM lands and we did our month long trip because we were 
we spent 20 bucks. We, we drove from Michigan to California and we spent 20 bucks on, on staying, like on staying. And it was because when we went to Big Bend, you had to pay to camp there. Other yeah. than that, we were camping on BLM land the whole time. Yep. And we found some wicked spots. And I think the website was freecampsites.org or .net. And it was just like people pinning spots on BLM land with like half-ass reviews. You know, yeah. This place is pretty neat. Overlooks this. <laughs> or, you know, good place to stay for the night. Um, I mean, there was, there was, you know, I'm driving. Chelsea's looking up spots and we just drive to it, see if it was worthwhile. If it wasn't, we turn back and find some someplace else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff out there. If you're willing to adventure and like dip in and dip out, you can find some really untouched territory in the world. And and I'm sure Absolutely. there's a lot of a lot of it out there in Utah. Absolutely. Like for for my hobbies that I have, I spend a lot of time doing research trying to find cooler places, whether it's on the map, Google. Every once in a while, my coworkers even tell me places to go. So that just adds on to the list. I have so many pins on my map of cool off-road trails to do. Um, but one of the, the coolest places, it's still my all-time favorite place, beats everywhere that I've been in, in uh, the Upper Peninsula for sunrises. Um, the coolest place that I've ever been for a sunrise. Um, the name of it officially is like the skyline overlook. Um, but a lot of people know it as the moonscape overlook, because when you look at this, this place, um, it is, it is like being on the moon. It is unreal. The, the landscapes that's there, um, the sunrise that comes up it is just super cool. Um, I have a, I have a video about that one too on my channel, but, um, the first time I ever went there, I I don't even remember how I found it. I just looked on the map, and I think all I did is I was looking at uh, um, the topography on the map, and I was looking at you know what this landscape looked like because I've I've been to this other area before that's nearby, so I've explored that. So I kind of had an idea. I was like, oh, maybe there's some other cool trails around here. I was like, okay. So I did a little bit more research on the app, and I found it, and. The, the nice thing, uh, you don't need a, a lifted SUV or anything like that to go. You can take a, a stock SUV like a Chevy Traverse or whatever it's called um, to get to these type of place, to this place at least. So you can any vehicle can pretty much go there. Um, I've had a lot of people reach out to me asking for the location of it as well because it is just a super cool, beautiful place. Um, but that place is, is the all-time uh, my all time favorite sunrise location, um, is, is just beautiful and it's not difficult to get to. Like there's a couple areas that take a little bit of special navigating, but not difficult at all. You just kind of gotta, gotta know where the pin is and you can make it there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but another place that I've been to is, uh, Capitol reef. Like I, I've heard of a few different uh, trails down there throughout uh, or through YouTube videos, through my coworkers, through some friends that I've had. And I've gone down there a handful of times to check out those trails. And the clay that I mentioned earlier um, is very bad down there as well. Yeah. Um, I went down there once, I think it was just before winter hit, um, but it was, it was snowing a couple days before that it was like october or something and there was snow down or november and there was snow down there and because of the snow the ground was wet and slippery and the clay was a mess and um i was driving down there and i was i was trying to go straight between it and the clay just like threw me all over the road it was a mess going all around there um but i knew that you know if, if something were to happen i'd be able to get myself out with either the recovery gear I have or the ability to air down my tires and air them back up with the compressor I have um, or the winch, I'd be able to pull myself through something with the winch. So it's like, ah, if something happens, I'll, I'll be fine. No big deal. Um, kept going a little bit further. And then, then I got into snow. So I wanted to just, I was just in a mood to explore. Like I had no plan for that day. I just went down to Capitol reef is like, I want to go off road a little bit. And ended up going into snow i got i drove through 
um, some switchbacks that were covered in snow. Um, those had like six to eight inches of snow on them. And I had to go up the switchback and it was a pretty good incline going up there. Like if there was no snow on it, it would have been a piece of cake getting up there. But since there was six to eight inches of snow, I struggled getting up there. So I had to go back and forth, back and forth, you know, push through the snow. And uh, I ended up getting to a point where it was a foot and a half deep and I was plowing snow with my forerunner where I'd go basically 10 feet at a time and um, I'd have to back up, power through again, 10 feet at a time. But that's the thing between the, the one of one of the lessons I've learned, um, which is huge. I'm, I'm always learning. <laughs> I, I will never stop learning. But one of the lessons I've learned from the Midwest to Utah is our snow out here in Utah is so much more uh powdery so much more dry it is just like like sugar you know like just white sugar you drive through it and it just kind of like folds it doesn't pack the areas that i that i was doing this stuff in at least like up in the mountains it's super dry if you're down in like the valley it's a little bit packier because it's uh more, more moist but um the snow that i was in it was it was so sugary that basically i was able to as soon as i was able to get dug down to the ground or the harder pack snow, I'd just be able to push through and dig through and the sugar snow would just kind of push out of the way. But if I was, if I was doing this type of snow wheeling in the Midwest, like the upper peninsula where we've done a bunch of snow wheeling, I would have been like framed out in an instant and would had zero chance getting through there. Um, there's been so many times where I've had to, or there's a couple times that I've had to get my shovel out and dig myself out because I was framed in the vehicle, you know, and it's just, it's nice having that soft snow, but it's definitely a lesson to be like, all right, how far can I push myself before I should either turn around or um, have someone else here with me to, to do it? Yeah, I would, I would have never thought about that. I mean, I've seen snow out in Colorado, but you never really know what it's like compared to, you know, the Midwest until you've actually been in a vehicle trying to push through it or make a snowman out of it yeah yeah so, exactly yeah that's that's nuts i mean you're you're just kind of reconcreting down the fact that i need to go up to utah i've heard so many good things from you and other people um it, it sounds wild it sounds like i have a vehicle that could make it through a lot of this stuff so and i love camping I so absolutely yeah. you you and uh you and chelsea and your kids could come out here and you could spend um a whole weekend or a week and you could go to so many cool places and you would have almost no issue with it and it'd, it'd be totally worth your time i'm not trying to advertise yeah. people to come out and move to utah because we're already full we don't want any more people hey, I'm get the fuck out of life. utah <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> we don't need any more people out here like me uh but that yeah good man is, real experience is there any other like tips and tricks that come to mind before we wrap this thing up because this, this has been great this has been kind of eye-opening on, on some of the things you need to think about when you're you're you know off-roading in different regions honestly one of the biggest things i can say is um if you have the ability to download a map of either the trail that you're going or the section of trail that you're going um the app that i use gaia it's if you pay for the annual subscription you can get offload maps or uh, offline maps where you can download them you can basically set like a square rectangle of a rough location of where you're going and then while you're doing those trails if you're in an area utah has a lot of areas that don't have service right so if you're in an area where it doesn't have service you can't load the map that you're at so if you can download a map your satellite download, will always load that's true. Your your GPS yeah. will always load, but you won't always yeah. get um, the service on what your picture will look like. Um, anyway, so yeah, e either if you can have like a map downloaded or have a paper copy of a map when you know you're going to be doing something like that, I'd recommend it. Um, if you don't have something like that, I would highly recommend going with friends or at least one other vehicle that if something were to happen, your vehicle breaks down, your um stuck whatever the case may be you have a, a friend there that can either pull you out or um, assist you if your vehicle broke or at least get you back in a civilization um, the other thing 
I've always been an advocate for like being prepared in your vehicle. Um, ever since like living in the Midwest and going to the upper peninsula where you could potentially get stuck in a snowstorm and have a foot of snow on the ground and you can't, you know, you're trapped in your vehicle somewhere. Um, I'm, a, I'm a strong advocate for like being prepared at all times. So in my vehicle, I always care, carry a first aid kit. I always carry um, uh, an emergency blanket and some miscellaneous snacks and food. Like if something were to happen to me where my vehicle breaks down or I get stuck in the snow or I'm not able to recover myself, um, I'm going to have supplies long enough to at least help me survive another day or two waiting for someone else to pass by or for me to be able to walk out. So those are probably my like top three, uh, tips that i'd recommend for for off-roading but the the best thing is just getting out there 100 all that matters the most important things just getting out there you don't have to have a huge lifted vehicle to go do all these trails and go explore and enjoy the beautiful country that we live in you just gotta have the the desire to go out there and check it out that's that's really the number one takeaway from anything that I've said today. <laughs> I absolutely love that. I don't even want to expand on that. I, Jordan, where can people find you? You know, do you have any shout outs? And uh, you know, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah. So my main Instagram page is that's mostly like my hiking and canyoneering adventures and stuff like that is uh, Jordan S VC. Um, my forerunner page that I made just to kind of post more specifically to adventures with the forerunner that I've done is Van Kelster underscore off road. Um, and then my YouTube channel, which I make videos of all my event, well, almost all my adventures is uh, Jordan SVC as well. Just it's still coming up with a name for that one, but you can check me out there. <laughs> Yeah, if you're watching the video feed, we've been playing his videos on the TV in the background, so you can kind of see some of the stuff he's been getting up to. I'll be uh, honest, it's been really cool because I, I, I kind of forgot about some of, I mean, I haven't forgot about these adventures, but I also, it's cool watching this in the background and be like looking back is like, holy crap, I did that. <laughs> so it's been really cool to see these videos in your background there. And, and I'm, yeah, I'm very glad to be on with you today. So it was, it was a lot of fun. I, I always have fun talking to you and it's it's it, one guy put his videos in the background i've been trying to do it since and i think it's so cool to just highlight or like give give the listener something to look at when they're talking to us kind of see what they've been doing instead of just seeing some some bro with a fastenal t-shirt and a bro tank um you know see see what he's been up to and uh just kind of ride along with his, his adventures um yeah, Jordan, is there like any shout outs you want to give? Otherwise, we can close it up from here. No, nah, I, I think I'm good. I know you got a you got a good gang of people and we've had a lot of a lot of them on here. So it, it's always great to talk to you and them. And yeah, actually, that's true. Yeah. Game. I gotta give a shout out to to Shane uh Marquardt because he's he's like one of my biggest adventure buddies. He's the the type of guy that um what do I always say? if your best friend calls you to do something, are you going to say no? And I say, I say yes, every single time either. Well, either one of us says yes, almost every single time. Um, but every, everyone that's been part of my off-road adventures, like the video that's playing in the background, those, those group of people have just been so much fun in my life. And I'm very grateful to have all those, um, great friends to be willing to do these things with me. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, man. Thank you for coming on. This is great. I learned a lot about, you know, Utah and some of the things to expect with, with, uh, off running out there. So thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I still got a place for you guys. If you guys want to come out and hang out, I got a bed for you. Thank you for listening to the type two fun podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a follow and feel free to reach out to say hello, give feedback or share your type two fun story.